Join Kids Hat Family. Tia, that monkey over there tried to imitate me. <laughs> oh, really? Tia, why are you laughing? Wait, I'll tell you why monkeys do this. The monkeys and the cap seller. Once, a cap seller was going to sell his caps in a village market. Caps, 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 5 rupees caps, 10 rupees caps, caps, caps. He was going through a forest. He was carrying a basket of red caps on his head. He got tired in the heat of the sun and thought of lying down under a tree for some time. He put his basket on the ground. <sighs> I am so tired. Let me take a small nap. There were monkeys on that tree. They came down <laughs> and one by one took all the caps from the cap seller's basket. Then they climbed on the tree. When the cap seller woke up, he was shocked to see his basket empty. He searched for his caps everywhere. To his surprise, he saw the monkeys were wearing them. He found that the monkeys were imitating him. So he started throwing his cap down and the monkeys did so. The cap seller collected all the caps, put them back in his basket and went away happily. So Tofu, we should deal with cleverness in such situations because wisdom helps during difficult times. I understand. Look at that man, Tia. He looks so scary. I wouldn't want to be around him. That is not a nice thing to say, Tofu. Just because he scares you, doesn't mean he's not kind and caring. Let me tell you a story of the beauty and the beast. The beauty and the beast. Belle lived in a village 
with her father Morris who was an inventor. One morning, as she was returning from the market, a hunter named Gaston stopped her. Gaston was an arrogant young man. Everybody in the village knew he always got what he wanted. But no one ever dared stand up against him because his father was the village head. The only person who paid no attention to Gaston was Belle. But Gaston was obsessed with her and wanted to marry her. Belle, let me walk you home. Oh, Gaston, N no, thank you. I can go home myself. I insist. I have to talk to your father about something important too. Belle continued walking, ignoring Gaston, who started walking with her. Once home, Belle quickly went inside. Morris, Morris, come out. I have to talk to you. What is it? It is your lucky day. I am going to marry Belle. You have lost your mind. Go away, Gaston. Belle is never going to marry you. Just then, there was a loud explosion in Morris's lab. And he took off towards it. Belle also ran towards her father's lab. Seeing that there was no one he could push around, Gaston left. Right? I have done it, Belle. My experiment was successful. I am leaving for the fair in the nearby village immediately. You will see, my child. People are going to love this. And so Morris leapt on his horse, Philip, and rode off. But as he was crossing the forest, he got lost. After a few hours, Philip and he landed in front of a huge lonely castle. There was no one in sight, so Morris tied Philip to a pole at the entrance and went inside the castle. It was pitch dark inside. A few candles were lit in the corners. Hello, is anyone here? I am lost. C can you help me? A large shadow came across the wall. As it came into light, Morris saw that it was not a man, but a huge, angry beast with an ugly scar across his face. How dare you enter my castle? You need help? I will help you. I'm sorry. I, I will leave immediately. And Morris started running back the way he had come. But the beast caught him and started dragging him. He took him down the staircase and locked him in the dungeon. Please, please let me go. Please let me go. You will stay here forever. This dungeon is your world now.
A whole day had passed and Morris hadn't returned. Belle got worried and decided to go to the nearby village to look for her father. But she too got lost in the forest and landed up at the same castle. Philip was still there, tied to the pole. Belle decided to go inside, just in case her father was there. Hello? Papa? Anybody here? How dare you enter my castle? Get out right away before I lock you in the dungeon too. Suddenly, the beast moved out of the shadows and stood in front of Belle. She was terrified of him, but dared not run. Somewhere from far away, she could hear another voice. It was her father. Please! Please let me go! Let me go, please! Open this door! Let me go, please! Do you have my father? Can you please let him go? Hey, what are you saying? I will stay instead of him. Please let him go. Hearing this, the beast took Belle's hand and dragged her up the stairs. He led her into a huge room. So be it. Your father is free and you shall be my prisoner forever. And so it was. No matter how much Morris protested, the beast threw Morris out of the castle and into the forest with Philip. When dinner time came, Belle did not join the beast for dinner. Instead, she stayed in her room crying. The beast entered her room and said, If you are going to stay in this castle, you have to follow its rules. You are expected at dinner. Don't you dare miss it next time. You are a monster. You didn't even let me see my father one last time. Go away. I hate you. Seeing Belle heartbroken, the beast felt bad. He pulled out a hand mirror from his coat and gave it to her. In the mirror, she would be able to see whomever she wanted to see at that moment. Belle looked into the mirror and saw her father finally leaving from the castle and riding into the forest. But to her horror, she saw he and Philip had suddenly been attacked by a pack of wolves. She gave out a loud cry and ran downstairs out of the castle gates and towards her father. Soon. She found herself and her father, Morris, surrounded by ferocious wolves. Just as the wolves were about to attack Belle, a large paw grabbed one of them by the neck and threw it away. The wolves now turned on the beast who had decided to follow Belle and help her save her father. The bees scared them off, but not before they had bit into his arm and injured Morris too. He put Morris on Philip, who took off riding as soon as his master was secure. 
the beast tried to walk towards the castle but fainted and fell. He woke up two days later to find Belle sitting by his bedside in his room. The wounds on the arm had been bandaged. You… you didn't go? You are awake. I hope you're feeling better. Thank you for saving our lives. Over the next few days, Belle nursed the beast back to health. As they spent time together, Belle realized that he wasn't as mean as he appeared to be the first day they had met. In turn, the beast learned to change his ways and became gentler and kinder. Soon they became very good friends. One day, Belle asked the beast if she could see her father in the mirror. The beast agreed and gave her the mirror. In the mirror, Belle saw all the villagers storming her house. They thought that Morris had gone mad and wanted to send him to the doctor. Nobody believed him when he kept insisting that Belle had been kept as a prisoner by a beast. Worried about her father, Belle requested if she could go to the village for a day just to save her father. And though the beast knew that she might never return, he agreed. Go, but take this mirror with you. In case you ever want to see me. Once Belle reached her house, she stood between her father and the villagers and tried to explain the truth. But the angry mob led by Gaston who wanted revenge from Morris and Belle for turning his wedding proposal down wouldn't listen. Gaston grabbed Belle's hand and tried to get her out of the way. As she struggled to free herself, the beast's mirror fell out of her pocket. In it was the beast looking right at them all. Goodness! She's shown the beast the way to the village. We must go and kill him before he comes here. The angry mob started marching towards the castle with fire torches and swords. They left behind Morris and Belle locked up in their house. Soon they stormed the castle gates. Gaston went upstairs and challenged the beast to a fight. But the beast had had a change of heart. He did not wish to fight. So he came out of the balcony unarmed and tried to talk to the villagers. But Gaston wouldn't have it. He wanted to kill the beast and so he attacked him. His sword pierced through the beast's stomach. Shocked, the beast swung his arm to protect himself. Scared, Gaston stepped backwards and fell off the balcony and died. Somehow, Belle had escaped from her house.
and reached the balcony just as the beast fell on the floor. Uh, I, I love you, Belle. I love you too. Please don't go. Suddenly, the castle lit up with thousands of candles as Belle still lay crying by the beast. He turned into a handsome young prince. Belle, it's me. You freed me from the witch's spell. To break the spell, I had to love and win the love of another. You loved me even through I was a beast. You saved me, Belle. You saved me. It really is you? As they hugged each other, they saw the rest of the castle and the forest bloom with beautiful trees and flowers. So you see, Tofu, you should never judge people by the way they look. I'm sorry, Tia. I will always remember this now. to do my homework, Tia? Tofu, it's dinner time and you haven't completed your homework yet? I hope you know that your teacher will be really angry. I will do it after this cartoon, Tia. But please help me so that I can finish it fast. You have been watching TV all day. You should get up and do your homework first. My hand has been hurting since morning. I am giving it some rest. Also, dear sister, will you please get my bag and pencil box from the room? Excuses and more excuses. He should know his priorities right. Hmm. Did I forget it in school? What will I tell my teacher in school? You should be more responsible, Tofu. You are a big boy now. Anyway, complete the rest of your homework at least now and be more careful next time onwards. So Tofu, let me tell you a story. In a land far away lived a hard-working and kind trader. Mostly, he traded in salt. He also had a horse that was very lazy and always avoided work. The trader used him to carry sacks of salt from one town to the other.
here. Let me load these sacks up and let's go to the town across the river to sell this salt. I am so tired today. Why do I have to work every day? I wish I could sleep throughout the day. But no, I have to carry these loads of salt and move. Come on horse, start walking. Cross that bridge. Until then, I'll pack some food for myself. The horse was crossing the river. Suddenly, he slipped and fell into the water. As he was carrying sacks of salt on his back, the salt got wet and dissolved in the water. So when the horse got up, the sacks on his back were lighter. The horse thought to himself, Wow, this seems to be a good idea. Every time I dip in the river, the salt would dissolve and my burden could be less. I must try doing this more often. I hope Master is not watching. When the Master reached the town to sell the salt, it weighed just half of what he loaded. Thinking it might be his miscalculation, he sold whatever salt was left and returned home with his horse. The next morning, he again loaded his horse with the sacks of salt and started to pack his food. The horse yet again started walking before him and made it to the bridge. I must try the dipping trick again before master reaches here. The trader got really confused as the sacks started weighing lesser every time. The horse purposely started slipping into the water every day so that the sacks became lighter. One day, the trader followed the horse. and hid in the bushes. To his surprise, he noticed 
the horse's new trick. Oh, that's so cunning. I must teach this lazy horse a lesson soon. So the following day, instead of salt, the trader filled the sacks with cotton and tied him to the horse's back. Out of his new habit, the horse purposely fell into the river. Oh no, no! What is happening today? What is going wrong? How are these sacks getting heavier? Oh, my back hurts! What? This time, as the sacks were filled with cotton, it soaked water and became heavier. The horse dipped again and again in water, thinking to drain the salt off somehow, but all went in vain. He somehow managed to get up and cross the bridge. He sat on the ground and panted as the sacks had gotten really, really heavy. The trader laughed at him and said, Horse, I am your master. This is your work. I work very hard and worship my work. I don't make excuses or find tricks to fool others and avoid work. I must teach you to never repeat this and avoid your work. The horse learned his lesson and never tried to avoid his work again. What a wise trader! Right Tofu? He taught the lazy horse a good lesson. Come, let me give you the big bitter medicine for your hand. But hey, I can see it's totally fine now. Maybe you have forgotten about the pain. Tia, I never had any pain. I just wanted to sit and watch cartoons. I was the lazy horse today. I am sorry, Tia. I am really worried about my teacher scolding me tomorrow. Here, take your books, Tofu. I also was the trader today. I just wanted you to learn a lesson. Now you should promise me that you will always do your work and yes, I will help you with your homework. Oh, thank you, Tia. Please, let's finish my homework quickly. I don't want to be lazy at all. I will always finish all my work before doing anything else. I promise you that. Tofu? Oh, hey Tia. Your friends didn't stay? Oh no, they were just talking about how much fun they had today pulling Ken's leg. Ken? Isn't he the new boy who joined school? Yes, he the smallest amongst all. Everybody is taller than him, so it is easy to pick on him. Hmm... Just like the ant, is it? 
the ant? Yes. The elephant and the ant. Once upon a time, there lived a huge elephant in a jungle. Because he was so much bigger than all the other animals, he always troubled them. In the same jungle, there lived a family of ants. They were a hard-working family who always kept to themselves. In the day, they would go to gather food. One day, as they were going, the big mean elephant threw water on them. Hey, what's the matter with you? Why do you keep troubling others? Oh, shut up, you tiny ant. One more word out of you and I will walk all over you and kill you. The little ant had no choice. It kept quiet and went on its way. You shouldn't pick a fight with the elephant. He is very ill-tempered and very, very strong. He could crush you. Hmm. Something needs to be done about it. The next day when the ants were going to work, the tiny ant decided to teach the elephant a lesson. She quietly climbed onto the elephant and made its way to the elephant's trunk and entered it. Once inside, she started biting the elephant. Oh, that hurts! The elephant tried everything but it couldn't get the ant to stop biting him or come out of its trunk. Such a big elephant became useless in front of the tiny ant. Please stop! Ah! Stop it now! Well, I hope now you know how others feel when you hurt them. Uh, yes, I do. Please, please stop now. Very well then. And so the ant stopped biting the elephant and came out of its trunk. I am sorry. I have understood how bad I made others feel. I promise I will never ever do it again. Oh! Oh what, Tofu? I understand what we were doing wrong. You do? Yes. We shouldn't make fun of Ken just because he's smaller than us all. I'm glad you realized that, Tofu. Yes. And I am going to apologize to Ken the first thing tomorrow and get others to do the same too. Thank you, Tia, for teaching me this.
for your favorite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.